How can anyone, whether they want to work in a language school or privately from their own laptop anywhere in the world, create a rewarding and impactful career teaching English as a second language, even if they are just starting out or have no teaching experience or ability? Hi, my name is Lynette Kim and here on the TESOL Talk podcast, I aim to answer that very question. One of the first things that you're going to find out as an ESL teacher is that teacher talk time in the ESL classroom is 20%. That sounds crazy when you think about it. You've got to explain activities. You have to give feedback. You have to answer questions in the class. You have to do so many things and keep your talk time to 20% as much as possible. I mean, obviously, there's no hard and fast rule and no one's recording to double check, but this is the goal that you aim for. And why is that? Well, obviously, students who are learning to speak another language need maximum communication time themselves to practice speaking, to practice listening to someone speaking to them, and not just the teacher speaking. So that's the goal here. We want 80% communication between students and how on earth are you going to achieve that? So you've got to look at strategies for this to be a really effective ESL teacher. Number one, pair work is paramount. You want to incorporate as much pair work as possible into lessons. So this means when you look at a course book and ESL published course books do have quite a lot of pair and group work in them already, but you're still going to have to look at a lot of the tasks and draw out more. So pair work is really important and also group work. But just remember with group work, there'll be your stronger, weaker students. So the opportunity to speak as much isn't going to be as open. Pair work first forces um, each student to talk, whereas in group work, shyer students can just hold back and let the others take over. So group work is fantastic, but pair work is better for communication. So this is really the main way you're going to do this. Now, additionally, what you can do is have students, now obviously you can't do this with beginner level, uh, elementary level, not so much, but from pre and up, you can have students read the instructions. So you can demonstrate a task, introduce the task, get the student's engagement and interest in the task, but then have the actual instructions read aloud by a student to the class and then have another student explain those instructions and ask students if they have any questions and start off like this because you don't need to run everything. You can be the director um, facilitating the learning of the rest of the class. So this is another way you can get students chatting. And when it comes to feedback, yes, you can give your feedback, but you can get students to give feedback also. So, and this leads me to the next area where you can reduce teacher talk time, and this is student correction. Allow students to self-correct and correct each other. So when students make mistakes in the classroom, you can actually say, uh, and this is usually when they're speaking aloud or giving an answer, you can say to the class, okay, so-and-so said this, but what is what should he or she have said or how? what is a better way that they can say it and allow other students to um, peer correct their uh, fellow peers in the classroom. And this way you're reducing your talk time, but you're also allowing the valuable experience for students of learning through teaching others. So although teacher talk time at 80% seems like a very, uh, sorry, teacher talk time 20% seems like such a lofty and unreachable goal, it actually can get much more within your grasp if you incorporate these things in the ESL classroom.